Tales. Tonight, I am happy to welcome you to part two of my fifth edition Dungeons & Dragons adventure entitled Rise of Piracy. Before introducing my players for this evening, I would like to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsors, such as Gem Hammer & Sons, Norse Foundry, Dungeon Crate, Hit Point Press, and Odd Duck Dice. Also, just a quick reminder that tonight's game is rated M for Mature, uh, players, please take this time to introduce yourselves, who you'll be playing tonight, and where the audience can find you. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Alan. I'm your Eldritch Keeper, and tonight I will be playing, let's see her name, Widriel, Half-Elf Rogue. Hello all, uh, I am Devin, and you can find me online at Sorta Sullied, and tonight I am playing Artabash, the life cleric and you can find me in the bottom left corner and i am Dwayne. you guys can find me on the internet at made of kimchi and tonight i will be playing the monster slayer ranger uh aiden birch blossom hello i am rose regular size mom and tonight i am playing nisriel the blue dragonborn paladin oath of the watcher nice all right, and when last we left, the group had finished resting up after a brief encounter in the darkness uh, with some sort of weird dragon made of shadows and blackness and had set off towards the village of Fireshine and now finds themselves just on the outskirts being able to see the village in the distance and beyond that, the mountains and the volcano, the lair of fire lake, perhaps. So what are you all doing? The scene is yours. We definitely need to reconnoiter the area. I don't want to go in guns blazing or bows blazing at that. How far outside of the, the town are we? Uh, you're, I mean, you're close enough that you can see the town walls. You can see uh, several giants meandering about outside of the walls. Looks like they're kind of walking some sort of patrol or guarding the walls. How um, many giants? Uh, from where you are, from the wall that you can see, there are currently four. Is there a direct route in, like a like a central? entryway yeah. yeah there is a road like an old dirt road that leads in through one of the gates um and you could just barely make out from where you are that the gates are open um it is still early morning so you haven't seen any comings or goings um but yeah it looks like a couple of the giants just kind of have a stationary spot by this gate and then a couple are kind of just walking off and out outside of your vision as they round a wall. And based on what you can tell of the giants, the walls themselves are probably anywhere from 15 to 20 feet high. Now we still have this cart, correct? That, um, we, stole, that we stole from the slavers? I don't recall you saying you took the cart, but we can say that you did. And I <laughs> believe we also, we killed four, there were, at least four of the slavers so we have there yes you <laughs> killed you killed a total of seven slavers i believe okay so we should be able to get uniform bits that fit probably two of us they did not Are have they... any they did not have any uniforms per, they didn't have any oh. sort of standard dress they were all dressed you know in various armor carrying weapons but they weren't a they didn't have any sort of actual like uniform to them. Oh, well then saying we're them and coming in would be easy. Yeah. That that was our plan. That's what What if we get caught? Then we'll then, fight our way out. Then we fight. Then we fight. Four giants. Plus possibly other things we can't see at the moment. So one, two, three, four. One for each of us. 
I like your enthusiasm, Artabash. I think that's I think that's fair game. I take a look at the big picture, the, like the scenery right now. I, I'm looking for a tree. I'm looking for the tallest tree I can find. Okay. Uh, you notice that there are no trees like towards the town. Uh, where you are, you can find several trees that are probably equally tall. But it looks like any trees that were close to the town have been cut down. All right, so I will climb that tree to get a better view. Okay. So you climb up the tree. Uh, with that, you're able to look into, like, over the wall just a bit into the village itself. Um, from where you are and what you can see, it looks like, you know, it is still early morning, but life is still going on, it looks like. There are people in the, sh you know, people in the streets, um, probably typical for this time of day in a small town such as this. It doesn't look like there's a ton of people here. What is the surrounding wall made of? Stones. I mean, it's, it's a dwarven village. It looks like it's a pretty strong, sturdy stone wall. How thick? Uh, from that, from where you are, you can't really tell. It's at least several feet thick, if not more though. Like you can't get an actual are, read on are it. Are people patrolling the top of the, the wall? Yes, you do see that there are several smaller individuals, non-giants clearly. Uh, what about a top. drainage system? It's a dwarven oh. village. There's probably engineering. Is there a drainage system in culverts along the bottom? Uh, you don't see any. It may be underground. They may actually have a sewer system. But it has to give out somewhere. Yeah. They could have also dug something deep into the into the ground. Is and, uh, the wall... Is the wall surrounding the city, or is the city in a mountain flank of a mountain and then half circle like that's protecting the city? So the city, the village itself is built like at the base of this, you know, what used to be an active volcano. And the walls are built into that and then come out and around. And you can see there are two other entrances from where you are, Woodrail. Okay, so like so, in the different so, sections of the three the three walls that aren't the mount the mountain. So yeah, the mountain's part of the wall. Right. It's yeah, the dwarves have used it clearly as part of the defensive structure. We oh, and we have a summon the elder gods from Savannah. What? Right. You, um, perhaps we should get a bird's eye view. Well, that's where I am right now. Uh, well, it's not a bird's eye view. It's a tree's eye view. But I, I, I think I'm high enough. Well, if people want to, like, join me up the tree, I can help them climb if they're, like, having issues climbing. So we can take a look and formulate a plan. Because we can't just have a plan A. We need a plan B, C, and D. Ash just looks at the tree and says, help climbing up. And then his boots start flapping and he floats up to where he's... Cute. I don't need help. Good. All right, so you help, you fly up to where he is. All right, so <coughs> I would suggest for a night operation. Gives us more cover. Or if everybody still wants to go with the plan of we disguise ourselves and just go straight through the front door. I'm down for anything. While uh, a Spending night incursion it. is much easier and we'll have the cover of night. I don't see exactly well in the dark. Neither do I but spending a day getting to know our enemy might not be a bad idea, just watching. That's fair. Uh, how far did you say the village was from us currently? Over a mile? Yeah, you're at least, you're a little over a mile out at this point. Okay. 
Mm. And you have no cover out here. Uh, could we scale up the mountain and then climb down into the village that way? That was another idea. Yeah, you could certainly give that mm. an attempt, yeah. I mean, it's a mountain. If we don't feel like going through the front doors, that is an option. True. So I spent, like, what time is it right now? It's the morning, right? Yeah, it's early morning, probably about 7 a.m. ish. I spend about two to three hours if we're willing to spend the time to just observe patrol patterns. Okay. If there's patrol changes, if there's a rotation with people, and how long does a rotation last? Where there's no, well, no one come in, go out. Yeah, I just take a look and see what happens for about three hours. Okay. So you don't notice, I mean, for the couple hours you're there, the, the guard doesn't change at all. Um, it doesn't take the two giants or that you saw walking the wall long to like make a rotation and come back. So it's like they're walking to the edge of the mountain wall where, and then they walk back around. Um, you do notice a couple of um, small groups of wagons entering, not from where you are coming from the east, but coming from the west. All right. But you haven't seen anybody coming the way you're traveling. All right. Anybody else have suggestions? From your point of view, you are not able to see into the city. Just the... I am a bit. It looks like everyday life for the moment. There seems to be citizens in the streets, and are there, do I see guards in the streets patrolling inside? Uh, you do. You can't really make out. You can make that out by demeanor, more so than dress or anything like that, just because of the distance you're at right now. I did also take the, uh, symbol of Tiamat off of the cleric that mm -hmm. I killed, I could simply brazenly wear that and walk in. Uh, she looks down at herself and says, I am chromatic. I could try that and probably not get bothered much and take a quick look around. That could be useful. The people that do go in the city, mm -hmm. uh, how many do they have carts? Are they being searched? What's the routine for getting in from what I can see? Yeah. So you're not really able to see much because as they approach that far wall, which is on the opposite side of you, you can't really see anything that's going on from your vantage point. You can just see them approaching. Some are just riders, some have carts. Um, some looks like they were dragging people behind their carts similar to the people that you stopped. I don't think we're getting into the front door. Without rising suspicion. In, in realizing this, Aiden will pull out his Pokeball. Okay. <laughs> and uh, his little, little raven figurine, he throws it on the ground, and a, a nice large silver raven appears. And we'll just go, Raven, find us another entry point. So wait a minute. You've had that for the all along. That's why I said I can get a bird's now. eye view. <laughs> that comment suddenly makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I was thinking you just had the ability to fly. 
No, that would be you. Yeah. All right. All right. So the raven flaps its wings a few times and takes off into the sky. Uh, what are you doing? What are the rest of you doing? What are the re- what are you doing while the raven is scouting out? I, I go next to Aiden. Can you see through the raven's eyes? No, but once oh. he finds out what he needs, he will report back and tell that us all. Been, that would have been awesome. I do have the ability to send a message to him, though. Can he send a message back? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I get sweet wait. I observe, like, just mm-hmm. to see if... How close does the raven get to the city? And if he gets within a decent range, does patrol react? Or they're just like, oh, it's a bird. Um, from what you get, like, as you're watching this raven, you know, as you're watching it approach, you start to lose it because it is smaller. Um, but you don't see any notice from the patrol, like, from the giants. People walking the walls don't really seem to pay it too much, like, you know, pay it too much attention. All right. All to right. them, it's just a bird. So I, I guess we just wait to get it yeah. from the, ra- the raven. So eventually, about an hour later, the raven, you see your bird come back. And it lands and starts squawking at you. What, what did you find? Nothing. Gates. Holes in mountain. Do we hear the raven talk, or is it just Aiden? No, it's the it's talk? just it's just speaking with me. It's just a okay. bunch of squawks. Holes in mountain gates. What is it saying? It says there is more than one gate, and multiple holes in the mountain. What does it mean by holes in the mountain? Probably tunnels to the mines. Can you ask a raven if these holes lead outside of the city? Like, is there access from the outside of the city, like on the other side of the mountain, for example? Uh, yes. Uh, but mechanically, it can't answer that specific. <laughs> it's a very mm-hmm. general. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did it see holes on the outskirt of the volcano? Well, Raven. Volcano, so probably hold, no. hold lead outside. Holes outside wall. Oh, there are holes. We could perhaps possibly... we could find a yes a side entrance to one of the caverns, and then get lost wandering in the mountain. Well, lost it depends. Uh, lost is just finding your way somewhere new. I. That makes me nervous. Nothing to be nervous about. We can ah. always find our way back. It's okay. We're just going to be lost, surrounded by endless structure of Earth. Hungry. <laughs> Go find food. It takes off. I have him for 12 hours, so he's just, <laughs> just going to hang Purple out for a Purple Tales, while. you cannot redeem <laughs> some of the Elder Gods. So, um, that means your raven can lead us to one of the entrances, correct? He could. Allow him to get some food. Okay. All right, so I think what we should do is wait. It's just a suggestion. We could wait and have the raven lead us to one of those entrances with possible cover of... Oh, yeah, you guys have a hard time seeing in the dark, correct? I don't think I have... I do not have dark vision. I mean... Oh. Yeah, I do not either. And also, I... if it's an operation where the dragon is forcing 
the dwarves to mine, I don't know if going into the tunnels and running into dwarves and their enslavers is a great way to sneak in. Well, there is the possibility of there, if there are dwarves in the mine that are enslaved, that we could liberate them and they could possibly join us. That is and true. I mean, we could start a revolution. They know the city better revolution. than anyone, probably, so they could probably help us navigate as well. True. No one knows, no one knows those tunnels better than those dwarves. That makes a good deal of sense. We just have to hope we actually find them and don't get lost first. True. Have we seen, or I should say, has uh, anyone who's been uh, observing the city, have they actually seen any of these dwarves? Widriel has seen what are probably dwarves. Again, observing from like a mile away, you know, everybody looks tiny, but... Okay. I believe that I have seen dwarves, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit far, but compared to the size of other people that I've been able to observe, I do believe dwarves are present. The reason that I ask is there are a number of different dwarves. Some may be helpful, some not so much. Well, I mean, if that's all you're worried about, eh, and I flip through my spells and say I can force them to tell the truth, I think. Do you think? <laughs> Community it's challenge. zone of truth. I have zone of truth as well. <laughs> <laughs> Only 4K more for a kimchi monster. Super filling kimchi. Oh boy. Only 2k more! That was my contribution. Nice. Uh yeah, so uh, let's uh let's uh, oh, complete. oh <laughs> completed. Oh no. It shall be done. Regular Man. size mom has sealed the super sealed filling the kimchi. Deal. I needed it done. I didn't want to keep looking at it. <laughs> it has been done. It has yeah, so make sure you guys uh, show up for the Mortal Kombat. Watch us Awakening. fight a <laughs> monster made of kimchi on Amazing Amazing Ascension. Ascension at some point. I'm assuming it's kimchi sentient. Kimchi combat. It's yeah, sentient it's sentient kimchi? I, I don't know. It, uh, it, it, it wriggles. It's going to be interesting. Wriggling kimchi. All right, so. But yeah, let's uh, let's grab a quick bite while my raven grabs a quick bite, and we can. Uh, it comes back a couple minutes later, like a worm wriggling from its mouth, or from its beak, rather. Uh, our casters can re-prep their spells if need be. I don't prepare; mine are just there. I'm just taking a look at my arrows, the flat chain effect, making sure everything's good, oiling the bow. All right. So you guys wait the appropriate amount of time. Raven, take us to hole outside of city. It squawks at you to follow, then takes off. Everyone give me perception checks as you're following the raven. <laughs> wow, 11. 28 with a net 20. Nice. Six. 12. And a 6. I'm and a 12. All the things. <laughs> yeah. So only Aiden really pays attention, is really, really paying attention. Um, you notice before anyone else, that before it becomes blaringly obvious that the raven is leading you very close to the wall. 
How close? Close enough. Too close for comfort. Can we hear giant footsteps? Uh, At this point, no. But Aiden, you know, like, unless you say something, the bird's going to keep flying that way. And how far are we to actually reaching we don't this know. hole in the wall? Well, we're, you're we're about, following the bird. <laughs> yeah, it just it's right now. It's obvious to Aiden that the way you're following this bird, that you're getting good, you're going to end up getting very close to the wall that merges into the side of the mountain. Um, so you're able to adjust the pace of the group if you tell everybody to. So you'll avoid the giant patrol and not risk being discovered. Yeah, well, if we can, we'll just like lay low, let him pass. We'll and take a wide he... berth. Okay. And I will also burn a second level spell slot. Okay. And cast Pass Without Trace. All right. Give so everybody, everybody a plus gets a 10. Plus, yes, plus 10. The sneaky sneaks. Yeah, to their oh, sneaky wow. sneaks. Sneaky sneak. Yeah, pass the trace is very nice. That means very I get plus nice. twenty four. I, nice. <laughs> I, I am I am very sneaky because now I have an eleven instead of a one. <laughs> uh, so we will. I, I will try to keep my eye on my raven as best I can. Um. I'm not impeded by any type of like terrain, so I could probably keep up the easiest. Um, if we do come near the wall, we'll just slow our pace, uh, but I don't want to lose sight of the raven. All right. Well, if push comes to shove, uh, Artabash pulls out four pouches and hands one to each of you and says, sprinkle lightly and go away. Huh. Dust of disappearance. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where would we disappear to? I believe we just become invisible. Yeah, I think it's just invisible. Yeah, it's invisibility. Thank you. Just double check and make sure that. I can just imagine that going very bad. Yeah, it's not like a dust of dimensional door where you just pop dust up on of a banishment. <laughs> Get the hell out of Dodge. It <laughs> just randomly show up on another plane. Wait, why am I on the ethereal plane? Okay. So you all make it to the mountain. And as you get closer, like the raven is swooped up about 30 feet up the side of this mountain. Um, since it's gotten a little bit darker now. You can see like an amber glow emanating from a hole that's maybe about six to seven feet wide. Oh. I guess we're going up the mountain. We hear any sounds, footsteps, giants, footsteps, other footsteps. Uh, you hear a faint hissing sound coming from up above. And you Take can see like some steam. It's like coming from the hole, and it seems like you see like a little steam coming out every once in a while. Oh, like a geyser or something like that. Yeah, like like a lava flow. <laughs> exactly, Atrabash. RT Bash. All right. So if the coast this. is clear. Yeah. Give me climb checks, everybody that's climbing up I'm, the side of this mountain. I'm is, just gonna float up. Okay. Is that acrobatics or athletics? That would be athletics. Uh, and if anybody has trouble with yeah. that, I'm just going to uh, take out some rope and a python and a hammer and just go up to the side and just kind of get that rope there. Does so that, that make a hold. lot of sound him pightening it in the mountain like that? It would. Yeah. So give, me an intel- give me an intelligence check, Artabash, before you oh, start. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, and I had to roll in that 20 on that. <laughs> yeah, you know as you pull it out and you hear like the first ping, you're like, ooh, yeah. 
that might alert somebody. Fine, fine. I'll do the smart thing and I'll just hold the rope and stand can fast. Fly? Yeah, I, my, I can fly. I'm saying for other the other people. Yeah, my, my roly poly ass is uh, well, you're having you're a hard time. All fairly experienced adventurers. I think we can climb a mountain. Yeah, but apparently I case, cannot. Fly yeah. into the hole, drop the rope. Uh, so I rolled a two, which means I got an eleven. Okay. Well, I rolled better than you, but got worse. What did you roll, Aiden? I rolled a six and got an eight. Okay. Got a 19 for the athletics check. Okay. So yeah, Artabash, you use your, using your boots, you just fly up to the hole. Um, do you drop a rope down? I will drop a rope down and help people up if they need okay. it. What's your strength? My strength is a 14. Okay. So, Woodrell, you're easily able to scale the side of the mountain. Um, it takes you just a little longer to get up there than it did for Artabash to fly up. Uh, Nisriel, you manage to, you know, little, you know, fine handholds. It's a little bit precarious at times, um, but using the rope, you're able to get up there. Um, Aiden, you need to use the rope. You just keep, you know, you, for whatever reason, you can't seem to find a purchase. Um, Artabash, give me a strength check. Aiden's a pretty big dude. He's a giant. That I is am, a I, 19. I'm actually considered large. <laughs> and and uh, I, I will just say, hurry on up here, you slippery man. Yeah, it takes a, a lot of your strength, a lot of effort to keep this rope. You manage to, like, wrap it around, like, a, you know, a rock outcropping. Can I assist Artabash once I get up there? Well, your basically takes you about the same amount of time to get up oh. there as it does Aiden with the rope. Um, so me? you all you all managed to get up there. Okay. Um, yeah, it just took a little long, and yeah, Aiden's Aiden's a he's a husky boy. Yeah. I am medium size, but I count as a large creature. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you were all at the entrance of this small uh which you thought at first might have been a cave but you can see it's almost like a tube that leads deeper into the mountain so it's been it like we, we can see it's man-made no it is definitely not it looks not it's naturally formed um hmm. probably a lava tube oh, okay mm. at some point how hot is it in here it is warm it's very warm um, you can see that orange glow just emanating from further down and steam kind of just cresting the top. It is also only about seven feet tall here, so some of you are really... Are really there cramped. any markings of recent lava flow? Um, or dire bears. Hello, raiders. Oh my goodness. Are there Don't any know, markings dire bears. for dire bears? No dire bears. There should be. There should yeah, be. definitely should be. <laughs> oh my god, I don't even know what that would be. Give me an intelligence check, Widriel. Ooh, Oh, 18. Okay. Uh, you don't detect any recent, what you think would be recent activities of lava. All right, I think we can go. Are we still hearing that hiss? Yeah. Is it coming from deeper in the tunnel or? Yes. Okay. okay. So you travel down. What is the order of March? I will go first and okay. I will go ahead and I'll go in stealth mode. If I arrive at an intersection, then I'll wait for them. I would suggest also how long of a rope do we have? It was 50 feet. I mean, I, I also, presume I also we all have, have rope. Right. I also so, have 50 feet of rope, but if you want to remain in my bonus, uh, you need to stay within 30 feet. All right. So what I'll do is I'll take the rope. I'll try to stay at a limit of 30 feet. If I see anything, I will tug three times on the rope. 
as a warning. Okay? Is that good? Okay. Uh, and uh, you you have dark vision, right? Uh, does a half elf have dark vision? I think so. Yes. Oh, then oh, yes. Oh, okay. So, and you, you and I are both able to see, so we can help. Okay, so should it go? You have Would... dim light from the glow, so like you're able to see okay. where you're going. You just can't see further out than like twenty feet ahead of you. For those of you that don't have any sort of dark vision. Okay, okay. so, uh, so maybe marching order: Widriel, Aiden, Artabash, and then. Uh, Nisriel brings up the rear. I just generally bring up the rear in pretty much all of my D and D games. Okay, that sounds good. But if I need to, I can just kind of re-angle which direction Aiden's going. Yeah. So there's like squishy, less squishy, squishy, less squishy. Yes. Wait, and you think I'm squishy? Aren't you the wizard? I'm the cleric. Yeah. Like a wizard. I, I got I got heavy <laughs> armor. I got 24 at C. That's, wow, that's, that's good. Very good. <laughs> He's squishy. I shall call you squishy and you shall be my party. <laughs> squishy. Yeah, I should definitely stick behind, or not behind, but be second in line to maximize my range. That's yeah. Good. All right. So I head off with the rope in hand, and they hold the other end of the rope, and I go ahead. And do I roll stealth? If you want to be stealthy, yes, you should roll stealth. 30. Okay. I will say that you're stealthy. Artabash, do you have dark vision? Yes. Okay. But Nisriel doesn't. Yes. So we have somebody with dark vision in front and somebody in dark vision with the rest of you. Okay, because so I, some... I, have, I have an ability to create a little bit of light. Well, like you said, we have 20, you guys have 20 feet of vision because of dim light. So it's not like you're going through blind. Uh, do we hear anything other than us moseying? Yeah, do, we, do we hear the tings and tangs of... You do not. You do not hear, like, the telltale signs of mining or anything like that. No, um, no high hose. No, no high hose. No off to work we go. No. Uh, no whistling? Nope. Um, yeah, because I don't know what that sounds like. I couldn't describe it to you. Um, what you do hear is the sound of um, almost like a very like a very thick liquid, and you hear like bubbling. Like, hmm. And up ahead, you can see, well, I should say that, Widrill, up ahead, you can see that the, um, it looks like the passageway starts to open up a bit. Okay. And Do I see anything? Me. Bear with me for one moment. Um, what you see is, um, do you just go to the opening? Do you walk inside? You can see it Very opens slowly. up into slowly. A... I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm careful in okay. how I, I, I look. I mean, if there's a wall I can use or anything to cover and just peek, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. This thing is giving me such a headache tonight. Sorry. Why 
getting that work. Sorry, I'm just trying to do something on the map and it doesn't want to work. So yeah, you're approaching, and yes, you can see a, I apologize, I'm trying to, uh, it opens up, as the cavern opens up, you can kind of peek in, uh, give me a perception check. Seventeen. Okay. You do not see anything. Uh, just this area is open. There are rocks strewn about. And that is all you can see at all right. the moment. So, but it's larger now, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it like opens a up. bigger into- tunnel. It has opened up into a large cavernous room at this point. Your dark vision only goes out so far and you still okay. cannot see anything. All right. So what I do is I stop, I crouch. Mm-hmm. And since I stopped moving, what I do is I keep pulling on the rope as if I was walking until they reach me. Okay. He's tugging. Well, yes. you were only... 30 feet out, so I could see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that Artabash can see me, so I just do... Yeah. Yeah, and I'll let them know opening up ahead. Come on. And I wait for them to be here, and once they're here, I, 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 I very, very, very low voice, I whisper, and I slowly move ahead. Okay. So I'm going to put us on the map. Let me know in roll 20 if you can see the map. Yep. I can. Yep. All right. You can all see? Yes. Yes. All right. So, Woodrill, you get to there. And okay. up ahead, you see a crackle of blue. Okay. And a bolt of lightning shoot out from the darkness, which is, I think... Dodge! <laughs> yeah, as you see the lightning, you can see this large, well, it's hu- this huge multi-limbed creature just staring at you with its, like, electric blue eyes, lightning dancing around it as this bolt just fires out. Um, I am going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Dex. 23. Okay. So you manage to jump aside, and the rest of you see this bolt of lightning just streak out of the darkness, like almost slamming into Widgeril as he kind of just moves aside fairly quickly, and it ricochets off the wall and, like sparks dance and light up the cavern for a second. Did it look like a dragon? Um, maybe I'll put the picture in the Looked like a lightning bolt to me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. That is what you saw, Widriel. Yeah. I think that's pretty cute. Uh, oh wow, what's that? I would like to pet thing? it. It is very, very large. It is huge, as a matter of fact. Oh, okay. Anybody's got polymorph? Uh, anybody <laughs> has Arcana? 
Well, the only person that can see it right now is you, Widriel. Can I roll Arcana? Yes, you can, if you are trained in it. I've got only an eight. Does it say you're trained in it, though? Well, I have proficiency, and okay. I have plus five into it. Yep, then you are good. But uh, only an eight. Okay, yeah. You are not sure what this thing is. All right, so we are going to roll initiative. Yay. Mm -hmm. 24. Uh. <laughs> uh. Artabash, what are you on? Oh, uh, let's see. That's that's a three. Okay, Aiden. Eight. What is your dexterity, Aiden? Your modifier. Uh, uh plus six. All right. Wow. Okay. So you got a two. Yeah. And Israel, you said nineteen. Yes. All right. Uh, Widriel, you are first. Um, so the area we are in, are there large rocks? Uh, there are large rocks. All right, so I will shoot first. Okay. I can you will... see your token on the map? Yes, I can. Uh... Is that me or? Yeah, that's me. All right, perfect. All right, you should be able to move yourself now. Yep. Well, do I have line of sight from where I am right now? Yes. OK. Uh, I do believe that's what, 50 feet? All right, yep. so I'm good. All right, so I will shoot it. OK. And here we go. Crit 30. So you hit. Okay, so now since it's a crit, my piercing damage here, over here. So yeah, it, it should, should count be. automatically, right? It should double the damage automatically, I think, on DND Beyond. Uh, uh, yeah, if you roll the crit. Yeah, it says roll? crit damage. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I just click roll. So that is a 13. Now, okay. it does. I can't sneak attack, right? Because it saw me and it shot lightning, correct? Right. It already knew you were there. All right. Perfect. So now that I have sh took a shot at it and did 13, I will move. How do I move? To a large piece of rock. I can't move. Got to select the uh, arrow from your bar on the left. And then... I'll select move. Yep. Still can't move. Up at the top, can you say select like the little cursor icon at the upper yep. left? Yep, I did. And hit select move, and you still can't move your guy? Yep, I can't select it even. Uh, make sure, are you on the map object and token layer on the map? Aha, uh -huh, that's a good question. Let's take a look at the layer. Where are the layer? Right below the, the little cursor move icon, there should be a... Yeah, we shouldn't have access to that because we're not... Okay, so you should just have object. I tokens. should, yeah, I should have access to it. But yeah, I have it controlled by you. Can't move. What it does is like it creates a box when I drag. So can everybody else move their guy? Yeah, I can move mine. All right, let me try reassigning it to you. Are you on the uh, actual cursor one setting? Yeah. Because I have select move, then I have pan view under it. Yep. So, so you I'm select clicking move. on the cursor. I do have the cursor, but I cannot select my token. So weird. Uh, hold on. Uh, now try. Yes. Now I can. Okay. For some uh, reason, it has you in here as Elaine G and also as Eldritch Echoes. Really? Yeah, I had That's so weird. I didn't notice you're in here as a lane G, so I just yeah, I had to change it to that. All right. So I have 30 feet of 30 feet of movement. Uh yes. it's five feet per square, right? Mm-hmm. So I will move up to here. Okay. Now, does 
Is it big enough for me to cut line of sight? Like, can I hide behind this big rock? Yeah. Yes, so I will go there and I will take my bonus action to initiate a hide action. Is that All right, go ahead okay? and roll. Okay. 32. All right. So yeah, you dart behind that rock and you hide. Uh, then we are to a 19. Nisriel, what are you doing with Aiden on deck? With Aiden on deck is what you... Yeah, Nisriel, it is your turn. Aiden on deck, meaning it'll be Aiden's turn next. So just so okay. Aiden can think about what they want to do. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, can I... So I saw that something... Uh, lightning at Widriel. I can't see what it is. Right. You saw a bolt of lightning just shoot out of the darkness towards Widriel. And then oh. Widriel shot an arrow at something and then ran off outside your line of sight. What is my move? Uh, probably 20. Is that at 20, 30, 30 maybe? Look for it. It's at the top of the sheet. It's to the left of your health. Oh, speed, 30 feet. I see it now. There you go. Um, then I'm going to start moving down the passage. Uh, okay. One, two, three, four. Can I move diagonally? Yeah. Ta-da. Okay. Okay. Can I see it now? No. There, you don't have you have no light source. Oh right, yeah, dark vision, all that. So, but isn't it crackling with electricity? Not anymore. Um. Okay. Um. Well, at the very least, um. Yeah, you're getting I, like twenty feet of light just from like that ambient right of the low that's coming around, but not enough to see that it's outside of that right now. Okay. Well, at the very least, I have resistance to lightning damage. So um, I can't see it right now, but I'm less likely to be grievously electrocuted. This is true. Aiden. Aiden, uh, also not being able to see, uh, is going to try and circle around because he assumes that this creature can see. Uh, so he's gonna actually gonna go this way. Yeah. Going to circle around back over here. And He will ready his bow for the chance to, you know, if it does whatever fired this lightning bolt fires it again, creating enough light for him to see a target. Okay. All right. And then... Bursting out of the darkness. It runs up. You just see this multi-limbed creature rushing at you out of the darkness, Israel. And as it does so, it launches out its serpentine neck to try and bite you. Uh, it rolled a one on its attack roll, so it misses you. Nice, that's good. Awesome. Can I get a uh, chop in at that long sinewy neck? Uh, it is not your initiative yet. Damn it! 
Um, and it will also, after it tries to bite you, it looks like it tries to like slide on its belly and wrap itself around you. Uh, does a 13 hit your armor class? Uh, oh, no, I don't it think not. a third. I was gonna say, I don't think a 13 hits. No, uh, so I yeah, kept saying no, and then I realized I was muted. Ah, so yeah, so you managed to dodge out of the way as it attacks you. Um, Aiden, did you want to take a shot at it? Am I able to see it now? Uh, no, because you don't have dark vision. Then, no, yeah. I'm just kind of like, huh, I can hear. Ah, could I make a perception check at disadvantage to try and hear where the commotion is coming from. Sure. I mean, you did hear Nisriel, you know, react, so you know it's coming from over that, in that direction. All right, here we go. Uh, first one is 21. Okay. Uh, that would be a 10. An attend to hit? Uh, no, this was to see if I knew where it was. Yeah. That was my um, perception check. Gotcha. At, at disadvantage. <laughs> ten. Uh, no, with a 10, <laughs> you do not hear it. It's too echoey in here. Echo, echo, echo. Uh, and that takes us to Artabash. Uh, Artabash is going to uh, run up. Let's see. I can't actually get to it but I can get next to, well, near it. And uh, knowing that half of his party can't see it from anywhere, uh, he's going to pull out that gem of uh, brilliance and activate the first setting on it, which basically creates 30 feet of bright light and another 30 feet of dim. All right, so now you can all see, anybody without dark vision can now see this thing. As uh, Artabash lights up the area. And sadly, that's all I can do because I only get the one action. I don't have any useful bonus actions right now. Gotcha. All right, which takes us back up to Widriel. You're hiding I will hop slightly on the side and I will shoot it. Okay. Please do not fail me, Bo. Do I hit on a 25? Yes, you do. All right. So that is 10 damage plus 17 for a total of 27. All right. It roars as you hit it with an arrow. Good. I will then, uh, let's see here. So I've got 30 feet. I will move here. Okay. Take my bonus action to go back into hiding. All right. 19. All right. For, high, for my stealth roll. All right, Nisrael, it is your turn. Okay, I can see it now. Yes. But I need to get closer to actually, like, nope, attack. No, you, can, you right? can attack it. It's got, it is huge. You are within, you are within reach to hit it. Rad. Uh, blood axe time. Twenty-two. Twenty-two will hit. Cool. And then uh, fifteen, and then I need to do my my other stuff. Assuming uh, necrotic and radiant will. Yes, they will. Uh, then uh, 15 plus 12. All right. It roars again as you strike at it. Nice. Do you want to do anything else? I can attack it again, right? Uh, yes, you can attack it another time because you have two attacks. I will do so. Okay. I don't think it's having a good day. 25 to hit? Uh, that will also hit. Uh, so 19 damage. All right. The 
Does it look hurt? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been slashed and it's got an arrow. It's got arrow sticking out of it. So yeah, it looks hurt. Uh, Aiden. So yes, now that I can see as well. Yes. This is a glorious day. You go ah. How was I not able to see you with my hunter's eyes? Nevertheless, bonus action to uh, pop on my uh, Slayer's Prey. I think. So within range. Oh, just barely. And I will take both of my attacks with my Dragon Wing Longbow. Okay. First attack of 16. I don't think that hits. Uh, 16 will miss. Yep. Uh, number two. Ugh. 20. Uh, 20 will hit. All right. Fire off two arrows. Oh, first damage is solid. That is a 14. And then I get my bonus damage of a d6. All right, so a total of 18 piercing. Okay. Gotcha. All right, anything else? Uh, nope, that is about all I can do. Okay. So on its turn, it will attempt to bite Nisriel. Does a 24 hit your armor class? Yes. Israel, okay. So you take 22 points of damage. Okay. And then, does a 23 hit your armor class? Yes. Okay. So you guys, what you see is it bites into Nisriel. And then it like rears up, still holding Nisriel in its mouth, and just ugh, and just swallows Nisriel whole. What? Aha, but now I'm on the soft insides. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are blinded and restrained. Your speed becomes zero. You can't benefit from any bonus to your speed. Uh, attack rolls against you have advantage, and your attack rolls have disadvantage. And then it, yoink, I'm just going to put you over there. We know you're, and then it runs over here. It attempts in my to mind, constrict. In my I'm mind, I am, this it much, saw you. I am way closer to riding it now. Does a 28 <laughs> hit your armor class? Yep. All right. You take 17 points of bludgeoning damage, uh, plus 17 wait. points of slashing damage, and you are grappled. Wait. I have uncanny dodge. So when an attacker that you can see hits you in an attack, you can use your reaction to half the attack's damage against you. Yep. So do you want to resist? Do you want to have the bludgeoning or the slashing damage? Oh, there's two different attacks? Yep. It's one attack, but it does two different... I mean, effectively, you're going to end up taking 17 points of damage here. Because it's 17 bludgeoning and 17 slashing from the from it hitting you with the king. So that's 34? Yep. But it's two separate instances of damage. Oh, uh, okay. So, so Uncanny um, Dodge was just the attack as a whole. No, Uncanny Dodge now goes, if you get hit, you can choose to half the damage using your reaction. Okay. Um, I'll reduce one. Okay. So it's going to be a total of 17 damage. It would have been 34. I'm like, Devin, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm go with that. 17 bludgeoning and 17 piercing. So you half it to 17 damage and you are grappled. There's no saving throw for the grapple? Nope, you would have to spend your turn to try and escape the grapple. Okay. And that takes us to Artabash. 
Okay, Artabash is going to uh, move directly up next to it because I can actually get right there. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, is that another one that's over there? Yes. Okay. All that, right. You can thank Miss Miss Emo Fox for that. Okay. Well then, I guess I will go with uh, what I did earlier and cast spiritual guardians uh i'm just checking uh yeah i'll cast it at third level so it's three okay. die eight yeah so if it starts its turn i believe it's uh the first right now and if it starts it's its turn in the area okay and it's uh speed is halved if it uh, is in there okay. uh and what's the save it is a uh, wisdom. What is your DC? 19. Okay, it fails. Okay, so it it's uh, 13 points of damage. Okay. Radiant. Nice. And making sure uh, how bad did you get hurt? 17 points of damage? That's what Widgerail took, yes. Yeah. Okay. And as a second level, then I will cast a, a healing word on you and heal you for... for... Oh, that was amazing roll. Uh, 17 points of damage. Nice. Oh, nice. Back to full health. Thanks. All right. And anything else, Artabash? Uh, no, that's everything. Okay. And it is now Widriel's turn. I will attempt to release himself. Okay, you can give me thing. an athletics or strength check to escape the grapple. You said acrobatics? Let's go with... Uh, no, you said athletics, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's try athletics. 17. Okay, you managed to wiggle out. Aha! Uh, so you can put yourself anywhere you want to around Within? it. Within? Within five feet. Basically within five feet of it. So, like, kind of where you were, but anywhere you want to be. All right. <laughs> okay. Right there. Uh, can I use my bonus action to disengage? Yes, you can. So... Please, how do you do disengage? Because I've never played it. You just move. Gets Basically, close. you just move away, and it can't take an attack of opportunity on you. How far can I move away? Your movement. Oh, oh, my full movement. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Yeah, it just lets you, as a rogue, you can do it as a bonus action, so it kind of just lets you squeak away, which is good. Which is always a nice little ability. So I will. Cool. All right. And hopefully, all right. Our and then get... we are at Nisriel's turn. Uh, Nisriel, at the start of your turn, you take 21 points of acid damage. Jesus. I'm sorry. No, that happens at the start of its turn, not your turn. Okay. Um, so you're blinded and restrained as you're just kind of like caught in there inside this beast being crushed and dissolved slowly. Okay. Uh, I. I guess I cast Moonbeam. Um, you cannot cast a spell because you are restrained. Okay. Uh, if I'm restrained, can you can I... attack it? But I can't cast a spell. I'm like, mm. give me a Concentration check. Give me a Constitution saving throw. We'll say DC 15 to see if you can cast a spell. 
15. Okay, you're good. Go ahead. Yeah. It still has, if it has an attack roll, it's still a disadvantage. I don't know if that's an attack roll spell or a. You Let just, me look at it. It gets a save. Uh, it gets a uh, attack save, uh, con 16. So is there an attack roll or just the con save? I think Moonbeam's just the con save. It's just okay. a con save. Uh, it fails. Mm. So give me damage. Wasn't that what that was? No, how much damage do you do with your spell? It made a saving throw. Didn't... Rosie's confused. Oh, damn. Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm you need to make... You're casting a 2 die 10 attack. 3d10, because I'm casting it at... Third level? Yeah. 16 damage. Okay. So, you see, those of you that are near it, see it basically glow from the inside for a minute. And it kind of, what you think is a burp, maybe. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. Aiden. Uh, am, is Aiden able to see this other one that's creeping on the come up? Does Aiden have dark vision? Uh, you can now because I'm within 60 feet of it. You're here, so... This one up here? Yeah. It's a 30 foot radius, right? It's 30 foot of bright light, 30 feet of dim. So yes, you can see it. Alright, so trying to control the uh, the battlefield. A spell was cast in this circle. Okay. A spell was cast in that circle. If you wish to move through the circle, or you can roll wisdom to try and figure out what it is before moving through it. But a spell was cast. Okay. Uh, and hopefully, all right, Aiden's going to move down there. Okay. And that is, that is all I have, all right. I have cast my spell. All right. On its turn. Now, Nisriel, you take 21 points of acid damage. And then it's going to attempt to bite Artabash. Does a 27 hit you, Artabash? Yes, it does. Okay. You take 22 points of piercing damage. And then it will try to wrap itself around you and give you a big old hug. Uh, I, uh, 13, I know, does not hit you. No. So it, does, it is not able to grapple you, but it does bite you. All right. And then this one will move five. Does the spell go off now? Yes. Okay. What is it? It doesn't happen until the end of your turn. Okay. One... Then let me just count out its movement from there. So it moves to there. And then it shoots a lightning bolt. You see it like start crackling with electricity. And then it uh, fires a lightning bolt at you, Eden. Glorious. Uh, also, uh, let me calculate uh, the damage real quick. <laughs> Both of them need to do another wisdom save. Yeah. Uh, the guy that is attacking you succeeded. 
And the guy, how far out is your spiritual guardians? It's 15 feet, so he's just within range. Yeah, he just walked into it. Uh, he failed. Uh, okay, so that's uh, 13 for him and six for the one closer to me. All right. Uh, he took 32 piercing damage. Okay. What did he just run into? Spike growth. <laughs> nice. 2d4 for every five feet, <laughs> and that's 40 feet. <laughs> nice. All right, and then I need you to make a deck save. Is this a spell or a like just a regular attack? It's a breath weapon. Okay. He just Dex breathes save. a line of lightning at you. That would be a 30, not 20. All right, so you take half damage. Uh, so that will be 66 half, just 33. Jesus. And then we go to Artabash. And Artabash is going to... Yeah, it's only its turn. Okay. Uh, how hurt is this one close to me, would you say? The one that's got an Israel in its gullet. I'm sorry, what's that? How hurt would it, you say that the one that's got an Israel in its gullet looks? T- uh, fairly hurt. It's pretty badly. It looks pretty bad off right now. Okay, so then I'm not going to be too worried about Nisreel getting out yet. And uh, <laughs> let me see. Sorry, I was thinking about doing one thing. Uh, yeah, and instead I will. Uh, cast another second level spell on it and flicked wounds. Okay. And that is a uh, 21 to hit. That will hit. Okay. And and that's uh, 19 to hit. 19, or 19, 19 damage. damage. Sorry. Okay. All right. It roars out in pain, but it is still there bleeding, and you suck, like, you see the inky blackness pull off as you just yeah. opened up a bunch of cuts across its body. And... Air inflict wound spell. Okay. Uh, so here's just a question, because Shieldmaster says anytime I make an attack, I can then use bonus action to uh, you shove. Does... Uh, we, are you counting a? Yeah, it's that. an attack roll. Okay, so then I'm going to use my bonus action to shove it, and uh, an eighteen. An eighteen will hit it. Okay, so it's knocked prone. Does it get a saving throw? No, it's part of the shield master. I can use my bonus action to hit it, and if I hit it, I can either shove it away or push it prone. Okay. I'm just surprised there's no saving throw or anything. All right. And that takes us back up to Witchriel. Oh. All right. I will shoot first. Uh, so I will take aim and shoot at the one that looks really, 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 really not having, the one that's not having a good day at the moment. And because Artabash is within five feet, sneak attack does work. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so, attack, attack. Ugh, oh, 12, I miss. 12 does not hit, correct? No, 12 does not hit. Uh, so, unfortunately, I miss. Okay. But I do still move. And I will move next to our friend again. Anything else? Uh, Nope. Okay. Uh, That takes us to Nisriel. 
Uh, I continue to cast Moonbeam, so it should give, give me, me a, another con Give save. me a concentration check. It should explode from the Wait, inside. Give me a it's con save. Twenty-three. Okay, you can cast. So DC sixteen. Yep. Uh, it fails. Rad. Eighteen damage. Okay, so with that, you blast a hole through it, and you can use your move action to climb out of this hole as it collapses dead. I do so, as though right. I am being born from its carcass. Nice. All right, so put yourself in any square that you're able next to it as you climb out of its carcass. Uh, you'd have to be there. All right. Uh, you, yeah, that was your turn. Aiden. Like a child being born. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all covered in blood and ichor. Yes. Uh, oh. I will maintain my concentration on the spike growth. Uh, and then I will fire my bow, and this time remembering to add my psychic damage if I hit it. Okay. Uh, bonus action, I will move my Slayer's Prey to the new not dead prey. Okay. And I will take aim and fire. Okay. Take aim and fire. 18. 18 will hit. Hey. All right, let's just do the... All right, so that's 12... Piercing on the first one, and an additional five psychic. Okay. And I will fire again. All right. That one is a 26. Uh, that will hit. Awesome. Doing even, well, that's, cr mm, do I want a three? I don't think so. I'm going to use my piercer to reroll my damage once per turn. Okay. And I did better. That is a total of 13 piercing. An additional five psychic and another one from the piercer. Or from my slayer's prey. Blah, 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 blah. All right. You fire two arrows. So yeah, initially, you're like climbing to your feet, like two arrows just shoot over your head into this thing and you're like wait a minute because you didn't know there was another one because you got swallowed before this one no up. but uh having recently climbed well, out of this thing's corpse would you say that i am suffering from about a dungeon fever thank you raiders uh, oh, got, i'm uh, i got Hello, a fe raiders. fever all right so with that this thing turns on you looking right. at the two of you and you can see it start to crackle with electricity as its ball opens and a bolt of lightning just streaks out, hitting the two of you. Give me deck saves. Okay. Uh, also, give me a wisdom save. Yes. Uh, does a 20? 20 makes it, so it All only right. takes half. So that's. Uh... Is that thing stationary? It's stationary around me. Okay. So it only takes six damage. All right. And then I need you both to make deck saves, Nisriel and Artabash. And uh, Nisriel, what's your bonus that you give me? Is it plus four? To what? Uh, my saves. Saving throws. Your, you your yes, charisma. It's a plus four. Okay. okay. And 20 on my deck saving throw. Okay. Uh, 18. Okay. Oh, uh, actually, it's a uh, 22. 22. I forgot to add my. All right, shield. so you all take half. You both take half damage, which is 33 electric damage, and then because you are resistant to lightning, right, Nisrael? Correct. You take half of 33, so you only take 16 damage from that. Uh, 
I have Shield Master, which since it was a deck saving throw, it's uh, as if I have evasion. Okay. That's your reaction for the round? Yes. Okay. All right, and that takes us to Artabash. Uh, Artabash is just going to uh, walk over to Nisrael and... Uh, oh, go away. Go away. Uh, and use uh, one of his uh, divine... or channel divinities and fully heal them up. And uh, that'll be it, since there's only one of these left, and it didn't seem as uh, hardy as it could have been. So I'll walk right over. Oh. I'll walk over to that there one. to do that. Okay. Thank you. All right, Widriel. Oh, new target now. Great. So, since I have two allies that are within five feet, <laughs> I will shoot at it. Okay. Cocking the bow, taking aim, and hopefully hitting. Here we go. <laughs> Crit. I got 30. Nice. Oh, the, does, 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 does the crit damage yes. apply for sneak attacks? Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a, that's a yeah, lot when, of damage. When rogues nice. crit, it that's can be nice. a lot of damage. All right, so first damage is 16. And nice. a sneak attack. Oh, it, did it double the uh, the sneak attack? It did not. Do I yeah, roll? Yeah, you happens? would roll double. Yeah, you can roll double dice. So if you roll one set for your sneak attack, just roll another set. All right, so that's twenty-one plus eleven. So that's thirty-two. Thirty-two plus the ten that would be forty-two. Okay. It roars as the arrow sinks in deep, uh, but it is still, still fighting. Can it be into his eye? You just take its eye. Oh, oh good. Sure. I'll kill you for that, it says. It speaks? Oh, it speaks. Oh, shit. That's well, actually, shame. who can speak Draconic here? Me. I, I, I have a helm that comprehends languages for me. Okay, so anybody that can speak Draconic understands yep. that. Oh, then I reply, do your, do your best. And then we are at Nisriel. Okay, okay. Let me look at the map. I am right there. I can attack it. That's all. Uh, blood axe time. Twenty nine hit. Uh, that will hit, yes. And then 19 plus uh, 19 plus 8. 27? 27 total. All right. And your second attack? Yes, sir. Thirteen to hit. Thirteen will miss. That's what I figured. I got a good swing in, and then I sort of stagger a little bit because you know I was being digested not long ago. Would you like to do anything else? What I would like to do is incredibly stupid. Okay. But it counts as movement. Okay. <laughs> Can I climb <laughs> on top of it? <laughs> Um, that would be a grapple check, so that would be an attack. You'd have to make oh. a grapple check because it's an, it would be an attack. So nice. I can't. Yeah. Oh, too bad. Nisriel could have rode the lightning. I mean, I of course I want to ride the ride it, but yeah. Okay, right. David Bowie. <laughs> All right, that takes us to Aiden. Uh 
Mm. And for those of the audience that have joined and don't know what's going on, is the party is currently fighting, uh, well, what is left of two Bahirs. They are on their last Bahir now. Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll just continue with my my arrow barrage. All right. Uh, however, I will move first. Okay. Uh, one to get a better angle, and two so that it has to move before it wants to hit more than just me <laughs> with another one of those lightning attacks. And I will take fire with bow. All right. Go ahead. Give me a roll. Bow one. 22 to hit. That will hit. Bow two. 24 to hit. That will also hit. So that is going to be a total of... Uh, that was a garbage. I'm going to reroll that with piercer. That's better. Okay, so 12. It's 26. Uh, it's 26 piercing, 5 psychic, and another 3 piercing. Okay. <laughs> and your second roll? That was everything. That was everything. Okay. So you fire off. Your first arrow catches it, and it shudders. And as it starts to collapse, your second arrow takes it, just inflicting more damage to the already dead Bahir. Um, you stole its one remaining hit point. Oh. <laughs> that, Nisria, ah! that, that Nisria left it with. <laughs> and it collapses and dies, leaving you, the four of you, in this chamber. Uh, uh, I have taken down the dragon. That was no um, dragon. I'm gonna kick DM, you. DM. DM. Yes. I miscalculated my damage before, and there's an extra six damage on it. Okay, it's still dead. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> now it's deader. Yes. Now it is more dead. It's mo deader. It's mostly dead. It would take a miracle. It would take a miracle. And if real quick, uh, we are going to take a short five-minute break at this point. Mm -hmm. right. That went well. Is that right? Mr. Producer, if you could take us out, please.
and welcome back everybody to episode two or part two of the two shot rise of pirate Slave. i am dave aka twin dad tweets the dm and we last left the party they had just finished uh killing two behirs inside a cavernous chamber inside of a once active volcano uh so yes there you stand some of I... you covered in icker and bits yeah. Some can I do that. an arcana check to see if there's anything of value that can be harvested from these two creatures? Sure, give me an arcana check. And an eight. Okay, <laughs> you have absolutely no idea. Can, nope. can I join him in that? Sure. It's not a... a... 19. Okay. Um, no, you know, like, perhaps some of the skin might be worse, but it would take you an awful long time to skin these things, as well as, like, teeth, but, yeah. I, I tell his character, though, that, uh, uh, if we had the time, you could get the lightning ball bladder out. This Is this a dragon-like creature, or what, what type of creature so, is Artibash, this? Artabash, with a 19... You know that this is not an this is not a dragon. It is a monstrosity. Um, you know, it's categorized as a monstrosity, not a dragon. Right. Um, you all like, but you do know, like, after looking at, like, after having a moment to actually study them and observe them, that they are called Bahir. Bahir, but there. All right, I think we should move on. Okay. So you leave the chamber. Um, there are a couple different exits. You just choose one. Um, and you find yourself uh, deeper into this old volcano. Um, you do come upon an active lava flow as you went deeper in, which is what you figure is giving off that ambient orange glow bits of molten rock in it. Um, there's a small path that skirts along. It. Like on the edge of a wall? Yeah, like you're able to like shimmy along. Now, you would you said that uh, water walking would work on lava earlier? Mm -hmm. You can walk on top of it. I just walk along the lava then. All right. I'm yeah. But you still might take damage. Yeah. I don't know. Would I? The yeah. heat is the heat is very oppressive in here. Um, you're not taking damage from the actual heat of the chamber. None of you are. Um, but yeah, you seem to be okay right now. The boot, the magic of the boots are protecting you. Cool. Uh, so is it blocking our way, or? No, like, th there's no way, f like, you came out of a tunnel, the lava flow is running this way. You, there's no way to go this way. It seems like you either have the option of going, you know, left or right along this small, maybe, like, foot size path. So it's a T-intersection. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But you would have to shimmy along unless you have the ability to walk on liquids or immune to fire and want to just... You know, wait in the lava flow. Go for a dip. Yeah. Well, I have neither of those, so Aiden will shimmy. Okay. Are we going left or right? Uh. Everyone, give me perception checks. Twenty-six. Okay. Seventeen. Well. All right, so the 17 and the 20, above 20, I think 26. Uh, you hear faint sounds coming from the right, like coming down the right. I look at Aiden. Do you hear that? I do. Right it is. All right. Uh, are we able to tell what it is? Like, is it just noises, like clinging and clanging? <coughs> Is it gurgling? Is it more of the hissing? Uh, Woodrill, since you rolled <clears throat> very high, 
It sounds like whispered conversation. Aiden, you so, can't make that out. You're just getting like between the lava and the bubbling and stuff like that. You're just getting there's something coming down from that way that's not this bubbling and such. But yes, Widrell, you're able to suss out that there is some sort of whispered conversation going on. I can hear whispered conversations. Aiden, would it be possible to send your raven as a recon? I could, but I don't know how common ravens are inside of caverns. Well, if it stays far enough to not be detected. It's also very tight for a maneuvering. Yeah, it's only seven feet high in the tunnels, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is just a fig a wondrous, you know, figurine. Sure, why not? Okay. I will send the raven ahead. Let me pull up stats for a raven. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yes, real. Roll me a d20. And let me know what you get. Bye. Okay. Thank you. That is all for now. Yeah, so my, my silver raven heads down the tunnel where there was noise. Okay. It takes off. Comes back maybe five minutes later. What did you see, friend? People. Fantastic. There are <laughs> any few. Mm, can't really count, but. I said, yeah. What is this intelligence? Does it have the... No, it probably doesn't have the capacity to uh, distinguish between a few and many. Well, it would. I mean, well, like, I'm it knows, like, birds are a flock, and they're not dumb. But it says, you know, few. Few? You may have some opposition ahead. All right. A small contingent. It's probably definitely fewer than infinite RP. Thank you for the raid. Oh, thank raid. you, Raiders. Thank you. And... All right. So I will head out first. Weapons at the ready, people. And I head out first. All right. Are you being sneaky or are you just... Well, I always want to be sneaky, but shimmying sneakily? I mean, you yeah. are still a rogue. All right, I will go in stealth mode. You could choose, yeah, I mean, you could choose, like, it's going to be hard for you to be, like, unhidden, but you'd still be silent. Yeah, yeah, I want to be silent, exactly. So I'll roll yeah. stealth. Okay. 30. <laughs> All right. So you approach, and as you get closer, you can see it kind of, it looks like there's another passage off to the side leading out of this lava tube. Okay. Um, and that is where you're hearing the conversation, like you're hearing the conversation. Um, do you speak Dwarven? Uh, common Draconic Elvish Thieves can't. Nope. Okay. So it is in a language you do not understand, but it's got the heart, like it's got the tones of Dwarven. Like you don't understand it, but you know they're speaking Dwarven. All right, so I'll wait for the others to sh to like to, to catch up. Mm -hmm. And once they do catch up, like, 
people there, but I do not understand what they are saying. Can I, I mean, I don't understand Dwarvish, but can I kind of recognize? Right, well, that's right, yeah. You know it's, dwar- like, you know they're speaking Dwarven. Like, you've heard okay. the Dwarven language enough times in your adventures that you definitely know they are speaking Dwarven. You just never learned how to speak Dwarf. We have Dwarves over here. So can we now hear them, the rest of us? Um, you still cannot hear them. You can give me perception checks. Okay. Not one, no. I don't okay. hear anything. Yeah, you're, no. There's nobody speaking Dwarven. You're clearly lying. <laughs> All I hear is glug glug from the lava flow. Yeah, you just hear the... Well, uh, I believe Woodrail uh, and Nisrael is all about liberating these people. And that was what we discussed before we did this and why we decided to come this way. So she uh, straightens her armor, hefts her blood axe in case they're less friendly than she's hoping, and uh, moves forward prepared to slaughter anyone that stops her from trying to help these people. Okay, do you push ahead of anybody that's in front of you? Uh, she, she says, I'm going. All right. Unless everybody in front of you moves, it's going to be, you'll have to find it. I do move. I let her, okay. I, I let her pass and I follow stealthily. Okay. All right, Nisrael, as you approach, you're wearing arm, heavy armor. Yes, I make noise. <laughs> yeah, you hear the conversation. <laughs> clang, stop. clang, clang goes the trolley. And you come around the corner and you see a couple of dwarves talking in hushed tones. Um, the light from the lava tube is like them. It looks like they're picking some sort of mushroom All and right. putting them into putting them into bags. And but like they both stop when they hear you and turn around and kind of. And then they see you, a blue dragonborn, and immediately cower back in fear and put their arms up as if to ward off being attacked. No, and, no. Uh, she you speak says, Dorvin? She does not speak Dorvin. Okay, so yeah, they're like, they're yelling at you in some language. I'm hoping know. they speak common. So uh, I'd be following behind. I do I do understand Dorvin. I don't speak okay. it. They're like no, don't hurt us, is what they're saying in Dwarven. Please, please, we're doing what you said. They're scared of you. She uh, looks at her axe, tucks it away, and uh, shows her uh, symbol of Bahamut and says in common, uh, I am a paladin of the... God Bahamut, I am an enemy of Tihamut and uh, those wicked that serve her. They look at you, what language are you speaking right now? Common. Okay. They look at you quizzically, but one of them points at your symbol and like hits the other one and they they visibly calm down when they see the symbol. They don't. Un- they don't seem to be understanding what you're saying. But they recognize. But they recognize the symbol of Bahamut as a good deity. That's that's essentially what I was hoping for. Cool. And then they're like, "Quiet," they say in Dwarven. And then they just look at you and look at your group. I will ask them if they speak the language in celestial, deep speech, and infernal. Okay. (laughs) When you try deep speech, one of them is like, ah, hello. Oh, good. This works. We were sent to help save your village city from Pyrosythe. We're here to fight Pyrosythe. Yes. Yes. 
Parasite is very dangerous. So are we. If it's a dragon, we will kill it. Dragons are our specialty. What are they saying? <clears throat> they say it's hopeless. You. Why? He makes his lair in the caldera above. And you see one of the dwarves is like pointing out after speaking. Uh, if you could lead us somewhat towards him, avoiding any of uh, his other henchmen, that would be highly helpful. Hmm. Okay. Most are sleeping now. Should I can take you there. I let everyone else know. He's up above in the caldera. Shh. We're avoiding everyone. All right. So with that, the other one, he like tells the other one to stay here in Dwarven. And he puts down the sack and he leads you through the, through the mountain or through the volcano, leading you up to the caldera. He's like, in deep speech, he turns to you, and see, he gets visibly more scared as he gets closer to where you're going. And he points, and you can see there's a, like a tunnel exit. He's like, there. That is the way to the caldera. Thank you, friend. We will take it from here. You're welcome. And with that, he hustles off into the tunnel, back down the tunnel. Ask, like, did they did they run away with haste? Yeah, they were like, bye. Yeah, have fun storming the out. castle <laughs> well before we go uh, I'm going to hand off a potion to uh, Israel it's a potion of speed or a potion of haste we should do this expeditiously speaking of potions I will also chug a potion. Uh, uh, are we at? Sorry, we're like just about to start this fight, right? Are any of you hurt? I am. How bad? 82 out of 115. 82 out of 115. Let's see. Everybody's got. Mm. We all we all have these potions of healing. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah. Don't we? I'm just gonna chug one of these. Probably overkill, but hey, whatever. Uh, that is twenty-two. Doesn't quite bring me up to full, but is. Pretty dang close enough. 104 out of 115. Well, uh, if you're at 104, then I'm just going to use a uh, class ability. It only heals 12 health. It throws that class ability, a racial feature uh, from my uh, Race, radiance, not radiant soul, but I basically heal you for your 12, for 12, one point per level. Or 12, you say? That brings yes. me to full. Yeah, there you go. And knowing that we're going into this fight, I also will activate my racial feature. Wait, is that a racial feature? No, that is a class feature. 
I will use tireless and gain 1d8 plus 4 temp HP. So I get a whopping 8 temp. All right. I got all the hills. I am ready. All right. Can you all see the map? Uh, I still see the same map we fought on before. Yeah, yes. me too. Okay. Beep. How about now? There hey, we go. It's, a, it's, it's lava. Lava. Yep. Oh, see, okay. as you step out into this thing, you see it is like ash, like reddish ash, and there are still flows of lava. Clearly, the volcano is not as inactive as you thought it was. Um, there are several, you can also see several large patches of those mushrooms uh, being grow, like that grow wildly in the soil, along with several charred rock outcroppings. You see skeletons litter the area here and there. And then further off into the caldera, you see the slumbering form of a huge red dragon. It scales darkening with black in age. And it's just currently eyes closed and you can see the chest cavity rising and falling as it slumbers. I will touch Nisriel on the shoulder and say, take the ancient powers from your other ancestors. And I will cast protection from energy. We'll make it fire. So resistance to fire, one hour. Bad. I will not die walking over to the dragon. I will also cast resistance to energy on myself <laughs> since okay. I'm going to go ahead long and do this as well. What other, what other BS can I make? I don't know, but I know Dave pretty well, <laughs> and I'm really curious about what happens if I eat one of these mushrooms. Because, like, uh -huh. it either does absolutely nothing, or could I'll I... breathe fire. Yeah, could I make a survival or a nature check on these mushrooms? Give me a nature roll. 17. Okay. That's pretty cool. I actually saw it pop up on my uh, on my screen. Um, you know that well. You don't know for a fact, but you can gather that these are the mushrooms that you were told about that grow here within the volcano itself. That the dwarves um, ferment into their what they call fire shine, a very uh -huh. potent a very potent liquor that brings in quite a bit of trade to this dwarven village. So it has possible helpful qualities. <laughs> Potentially, or it just makes really good hooch. <laughs> that is the, that is the potential good quality. <laughs> All right, so it's probably not going to help this real breathe fire. That's fine. I just had to check. Like, Unless they're very... spicy mushrooms. I mean, yeah, she's going to have to try that beer later after we kill this thing. Um... Yeah. Are there any other preparations? Uh, I don't have any. Yeah. That would be when I'd say we should chug the potions and 
start running up to try and murderize it, us a dragon. Bite. All right. I mean, the scene is yours. If you want to give me initiative. I think we Let should all be swift. I think we all should quietly get close and then try and surprise round. Oh, that's a lot of ground to cover. Yes, Cheryl, did you roll a 27? Yes. Okay. Aiden, that's so cool. It auto-filled on the encounter builder for you guys. If you roll in D D uh, D and D Beyond. Oh, it did. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I rolled a twenty-four. A fourteen. I saw. Atrabash, you did not roll in the encounter builder, did you? No. You devil man, you. Yeah, I've been preferring odd duck dice. <laughs> Uh, and I believe that Elaine has to vamoose. Yes. So I will have to control Widriel. Okay. Oh, I thought you were just going to kill him. Not yet. (laughs) And he suddenly (sighs) fell into a lava flow and died. I gotta pick up my son from school. Okay. All right. Be safe. Catch you later. Kill them dragon. And if we could get a cover for our Eldritch Keeper. I can do this. Okay. All right. Catch you guys later. All right. Widriel will start by hiding and trying to approach. What are the rest of you doing? Are we officially in initiative? We'll move. Wajiro basically uses his bonus action to go there and hides. Yeah, I mean, you guys can do what you want. This is effectively surprise. I just had your own initiative for when initiative actually kicks off. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I have consumed the. Uh, Potion of haste. And so that gives me double move speed. So that I'll have 60. Yeah, uh, if you want to cross the lava, you have to make an athletics check to jump it. I have a fair chance of succeeding at that. <laughs> yeah, so just move yourself where you would like to go, everyone. Uh, so 20 athletics check. Okay, yeah, you're managed to, as you move, you hop over the lava. I just run over the lava. Yeah, I know. Here. Um. Ugh. Do I want to start this out by catching on fire? No, I do not. <laughs> I'm just going to skirt around over this way. Okay. Take up a and... spot near these, these shrooms. I'll hide behind this rock for the moment. Actually, I go get one step closer. Can you guys see that happening? Yes. yes. Mm. It's very uh... cool. Okay, I am within 60 feet now. Actually, I can use extra action to do a double dash. So I can get closer. And that's for you too, Rosie. Oh, I can do that as well? Yeah, because uh, we have oh, right, right, right. Uh, extra yeah, action yeah. from it, so we can do a double dash. Uh, so then I can move another 60? Is that? Uh, I think it's... Well, I think it depends on... Uh, Dave, is it going to be a double dash being a... Oh wait, did you even dash at all then? I forgot, we get double movement speed. No, I haven't dashed. Oh, so then yeah, we'd be able to double dash. It gives you the effects of haste, correct? Yeah, so yeah. you'd be able so, to go 120. 
your speed is doubled. You get a plus two bonus to your armor class. You have advantage on deck save, and you get an additional action on each of your turns that can be used only to take the attack, one weapon attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object action. And when the spell ends, the target can't move or take action until after its next turn as a wave of lethargy sweeps over. Okay, so you good. have this for 10 combat rounds. I'm there now. This is, yeah, so... <laughs> You're like right that's, yeah. that's one. Yeah, that would be the same for me. You fools. <laughs> we have to we have to kill it. Like there's there's no right. dancing around this. So you were that is turn one, you just run up to it? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Can I do anything before combat starts? Uh well, that depends on your companions, not me. Is it asleep? Is it Yeah, as you get up to it, it's just laying there slumbering. As you both just kind of rush up to it. <laughs> Ah, <clears throat> so Aiden. Uh, once I get to where I am on the map, mm -hmm. uh, I will activate my hunter's sense. Uh, creature I can see within sixty feet. I immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities. Okay, you use your hunter's sense on it, and you get nothing, as if it's not <laughs> even there. Oh snap! And then I roll perception. <laughs> okay. Oof. And what are Nisriel and Artabash doing? Uh, I am going to be uh, casting a really? holy weapon onto uh, Nisriel's blood axe. All right. This it's a bonus turn... act. It's a bonus action. Okay. Uh, it will be giving two die extra radiant damage every attack. Okay. Of oh of, of her radiant. Oh. Yes, and since you have more actions, there are more attack actions than me. That's why I gave it to you. Cool, cool. So you said another uh, two die eight per hit. Another two on top mm -hmm. of. All right. Cool. Um. I don't know. I feel myself fill with Bakhmet's righteous fury, and I glare at this thing, uh, ready to attack, and then look around and realize we're missing a party member. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. This is turn two. What is everyone doing? I know you're making a perception check, Aiden. For a total of 27. Okay. Something's not right. Yeah, you, as you... Something is clearly not right with this. Um, the, sl the the breathing is too... programmed, too regular. And the creature um. hasn't stirred. You know dragons are very, very perceptive and in tune with their environments, especially yes. in their lairs. And for this thing to not have reacted at all especially when Nisriel in her heavy armor came clanking up to it. Maybe it's just an old, tired dragon. Something is not... You know something is not right. Do you say anything? Yeah, I probably... It's a trap! Okay, so Aiden screams out, it's a trap. What are you two doing? You don't see Widriel at all, unless you want to make a perception check to try and find him. No. Nah. No. Widriel knows what he's doing. Uh, I mean, whip around to look for where else it might be? Is it in the lava? I don't freaking know. Yeah, you're looking around. Make perception check. Uh, I'm going to be whip out a uh, lantern of revealing and uh, be looking around with that because if it is invisible, they become visible in the lantern of revealing. With uh, What else does the lantern reveal? And what's the what's the range on the lantern? It just states, it's 30 feet, and it says, uh, for 30, 
30 foot radius, uh, an additional 30 feet dim light. Invisible creatures and objects are visible as long as they are in the lantern's bright light. So it doesn't reveal. It doesn't reveal if it is fake, but it does reveal if they are invisible. Which is so weird. It's like the lantern of revealing, but it doesn't reveal it, it's illusions. Like, it's, it's like true sight light. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, so you scan the lantern around. You're not... Nothing within its radius is being revealed. Nisriel, what did you roll in your perception check? 15. Yeah, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Um, then I attempt and... to goad it. So, uh, could I what? also do a perception check? Yeah, go for it. I love your dice, Rosie. Nat 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're looking around, and there's nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, there's something clearly wrong with this. As you look at this thing closer, like kind of what I said to Aiden, it's too programmed, as if it's some sort of, you know, just something wrong with it. And we touch it. It's a trap. Yeah, as you go to touch it, your hand just passes right through it and it vanishes. Okay. <laughs> and fire explodes everywhere. Ah! And as it disappears, you hear from behind all of you. Well, I think that's enough of this charade. And Aiden, you turn back and you see walking out of the cavern. Oh, shit. Is a dwarven man. I knew it was weird he'd speak deep speech. It is not that dwarven man. Oh, okay. Uh, you can see he's got like an uh, eye patch over one eye. It's like, I've been keeping an eye on you, Nisriel, for a while. Thank you for coming, all of you. I am so hungry and in need of a snack. And as he walks, you see his form begin to like mold and shift as wings spread out in the form of a huge red dragon take shape. And we are at initiative. He's over here, and you're on the wrong side. Uh, Nisriel, <laughs> you are actually on a 30. Widriel shoots an arrow at this thing and misses horribly. So that was Widriel's turn. Widriel then tries to move. Duck and weave. Duck and weave. 30. Bonus action to hide. And he hides. All right, 27, Nisriel. Okay, so where actually is the, uh, it's over there. Bottom left. Damn yes. It. All right, time to get my cardio in. Let's run back that way. <laughs> so you move 60 feet. Yeah. And then you need another athletics checks. Uh, if you want to, so the, um, if you want to use your second, if you want to use your attack action to move again, you can. You can basically dash. Or I can wait for it to come. To, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what's better there. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's going to attack me. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, roll athletics to get over the lava and uh, see if I can get to it. Okay. 16. You're fine. You can make it. Huzzah. I get to, I'll, I'll sort of, I doubt the rock will actually give me cover, but I'm there.
But you still have one more action. Uh, 60 feet movement, another move action to get there, so... But uh, the haste gives her two actions. Well, haste doubles your speed and, and gives you a bonus action. It which gives can you... be used for an attack. Uh, so it... the question, I guess, then, Dave, is... Am I done, or can I attack it? So haste will double your speed, which makes your speed from 30 to 60. Correct? Yes. Plus two to AC, advantage on deck saves, and gains an additional action. That action can be used only to take the attack, one weapon attack only, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. Okay, so I used it to run a second time, so I, I think Right, I'm so done. dash would be another... 30 feet which you did mm -hmm. you ended up here so if you went 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 I mean if your speed's 30 you could be next to it and make an I... you would be next to it I mean yeah I know I could be next to it but... okay you're just hanging back I don't wanna I mean sure I'll be there I guess I guess the rock wouldn't help me much anyway I was Thinking maybe I could attempt to take some kind of cover, but I doubt it'll help. Yeah. yeah, so when you use your extra bonus action to dash, it gives you basically an extra 30 feet. It gives you an extra speed of movement equal to your speed. So Which effectively, with 60. a dash, with a dash, you could move... 120. So my question is still the same. Can yeah, I attack it but you not? still would not be able to attack because okay. your bonus action from haste was to dash. That's what I thought. Great, we can move on. Yeah. That's how I interpreted it as well. Okay. So that takes us from a 27 to a 24, which is Aiden. Uh, Aiden's like, oh, shit. Um, hmm. Uh, in an attempt to try this again, as it didn't work on this strange, illusory thing, uh, I will try my... Where is it at? My hunter sense again. I got three more charges. All right, let's see if I can learn about its damage immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities this time. Okay. Or does it just have none? <laughs> none of the above. Oh, and I apologize. Um, I'm going to back up for a second. And Nisriel, you will get your attacks. Because the bonus action was your dash, which puts you up next to it. But you still have your actual attack action. Because you okay. use your move of 60 feet to get right before the lava. Then you can use your bonus action from haste to dash, which will put you next to it. And then you still have your attack actions. Okay. So you can make your two attacks. Brad. All right. Let's axe it. Uh, 21, does that hit? A 21 would hit, but you see it, like, almost like flick its claw at you. And this this like force barrier shows up in between the two of you, and you it, your blade just ricochets off that. That's annoying. Okay. You would say it brought up a magical shield. I can't really do a whole heck of a lot against that. I mean, you could still attack it. It just makes it harder to hit it. I mean, I will attempt it again. Uh, you never know, I might roll a 20. No, another 21. Okay. 
So that misses. So now we are at Aiden. So yes, as as I had stated, I will try my hunter's sense again. Okay. And your hunter sense tells you it's immunities. Damage immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities. Okay, it has an immunity to fire. Uh, no other resistances and no vulnerabilities. Okay, just immune to fire. Awesome. Uh, and now that it has seen all of us, I will use my said bonus action to <coughs> turn invisible until the start of my next turn. I attack, deal damage, or force a saving throw. I get it one time. Poof. I'm gone. Okay. I disappear. And then I will move after I disappear. <laughs> I'll move over here. Okay. And you notice, Nisriel, as you were up close, the eye patch that it wore is now gone, and in its place, you see a swirling orb of like gray blue mist. Oh, right. Wonderful. <laughs> And then, if you would like to make an attack of opportunity, well, first, we have uh, everybody give me... Bleh. I can't find it. Give me a wisdom saving throw, except for you, Nisriel. Wisdom. That is a 23. Okay. Checking to see if I get advantage on this. I do not. And I rolled a nat one. All right. So you feel this like wave of terror just come over you. You are frightened. How close are they to me? They have to be within 10 feet to be immune. Damn I it. Believe. Yeah. So yeah, everybody's separated. Atrabash, you got over a 20, right? Yes. Okay, so you are fine. So Aiden, you are frightened. Widriel is also frightened. So with that... It then flaps its wings extremely hard. I need Nisriel to make a dexterity saving throw. You got a 14. Yeah, I, uh, and I get advantage on dex saving throws because of the haste. Yep, so, so go ahead and roll again. 20! Okay, so thank you. The wings flap; it just blows you over. You fall down, becoming prone, and you take fifteen points of bludgeoning damage as the wind just buffets you. And it flies to there with its movement. And that was its legendary action. Then with its actual actions, you see it keeps flying to here and bites at Widriel, then tries to use its claws. All right, I know a 32 hits Widriel. Okay. So you see this thing fly over Widriel and it like snaps at him and then snatches him up in its claws and like digs its claws into him and keeps flying. So it basically flies to there and then it starts flying upwards another 60 feet into the air. So it's got Widriel in its claws. And that will take us to Artabash. 
So Artabash is going to uh, start to glow as uh, his radiant soul comes to surface and my eyes will start glimmering and I get wings. And now I can fly without my boots. Uh, it increases my speed and I'm going to or I get extra damage on my attacks. And I'm going to, you said he's 60 feet up? Yes. So... All right, 30 feet away, 60 feet up, so I can get to him with a dash, and then I can smack him once with an attack. And, uh, hold on, before I do, let me see what it is real and quick. And Widriel took 63 points of damage from those attacks. Oh, jeez. Ow. Okay. No, no evasion or anything? Uh, he can use, he will use his uncanny dodge to take half on one of those. And I believe he still has some of his p potion of superior healing. I hope he has at least one of those left. Yeah. Okay, I guess I will go and do a cure wounds on him instead then, because ow. Uh, uh you would have to touch him. So yeah, that's fine. Because this thing's yeah. currently got him grappled. That's true. Yeah, he's like reaching his hand out to you. He's holding his bow in one hand and he's like help me! <laughs> I will cast it at... Uh, wait, how much health did he lose? Uh, 55 after using his uncanny dodge. Yeah, I will use it as a fourth level, and he gets sixteen. Oh, that was pretty bad. Uh, twenty-seven health. All right. All right, he, he thanks you. And then just to make it even better, I'll use a first level healing word to give him an extra... E4 plus modifier. Uh, an extra nine because I rolled a one. Nice. Okay, that actually healed him for quite a bit of that damage. All right, anything else, Artabash? Artabash? Uh, no, that'll be it. All right. Uh, Widriel uh, will pull out a weapon and try to stab this thing. Uh, he pulls out his Dagger of Venom and just can't get it through the claw. He's like, Argh. and he's not going to try to break the grapple because, you know, falling damage. Uh, so that was Widriel's turn. Then we are at Nisriel. And then uh, so Aiden. What was that? I said Nisriel and then Aiden. Nisriel pulls out a brass horn, uh, Horn of Valhalla, mm -hmm. and blows upon it to summon 3d4 plus 3 warriors. So I'm going to roll my 3d4. Okay. Uh, so that is six, seven, eight, plus three. So eight, nine, ten, eleven warriors who show up and are nice to me. And <laughs> that's important because otherwise where they don't do, attack me. Where do they show up? Uh, within 60 feet of me. Okay, where do you want them? Uh, one, two. I just thought if you cast that right next to the dragon, have them all just pile on. Well, I don't well, know where the dragon is. Cursed. He's in the air, so she can't summon them in the air. I, no, I know. but um, I guess within shouting distance of me currently, so that 
we can I can give them directions. Okay, and how many of them are there? Eleven. Good lord. You said I could take it. Oh, I know. There's quite a bit of them. And I'm trying I, to put them all on the board. Uh, and they use the statistics of a berserker. All right. Well, you, I think, need to look that up. Okay. What is that? The Horn of Valhalla? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, the brass or the bronze? The brass. So I now have the stats for Berserker. Uh, cool, cool. All right, anything else? Um, I guess I, oh, I need to figure out what their health is. Oh, they have 67 hit points. Okay, great. Um, I instruct them to charge and okay. we charge, I guess. Well, they are current, the dragon is in the air. Oh yeah. Then we should come up with something else smarter than that. Right now. So you can tell them to charge, but they can't fly. No. Do any of them have throwing weapons? It looks like they do melee attacks. So no. They, they are proficient in all simple weapons, I do believe. Yes, all simple weapons. The Berserker comes standard with a great axe. But I guess you could technically switch it up. Uh, that's up to the GM. I'm fine with them just having great axes and us needing to wait. I'll give them each a javelin. So they could hurl a javelin at this thing. Okay. I imagine uh, berserkers would have some sort of javelin weapon to throw as they charge in. All right. So then they're each going to throw a javelin. Okay. Uh, give me 11 attack rolls. So it's a 11... Uh, D20s you want me to roll? Yes. All right, I'm going to roll three. Oh, no, I, can, I, have, I have enough D20s for this. Do they get any bonuses? I don't think so. Oh, plus five to hit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, which they would still get with the javelin because it's a strength-based throwing weapon. All right. Uh, so the first one is 18. Uh, that will miss. And the nine, six, those will miss. But there is a nat 20. So that will hit. There's two nat 20s. Okay, those will hit. Um, and there's two 19s. Oh, the 19s miss. Okay, but the two nat 20s hit. Yes, the two nat 20s do hit. Cool. All right. And then what's damage for a javelin? Ah. 
1d6. Plus three for their strength. So it should be 2d6 plus three since they critted. Pardon? Oh, 2d6 so, Yeah, since they were a crit hit, it's double yeah, damage. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Hello, Raiders. Hello, Martlet Games. Oh. Oh, hello. hello. The team faces Pyocyte, the frenzied flame. As he's known to his friends. I'm invisible. <laughs> uh, so, and you said plus three for their strength? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the first one does 13, and then the second one does uh, 10. All right. You see the javelins kind of hit it almost like large toothpicks. The one kind of sticks into a scale, the other one just kind of hits and skitters off. But you know it did damage. Great. Uh, that was on a 27. Aiden. 24. What are you doing? That was well, their attack. Do I still get? Well, your action, I believe, was to blow the horn. But So you still haste. have your... Yeah, you still have your other bonus action to do something. Can I... I don't... How... Actually, you could use your haste to use the use object action, which would have been the horn. So technically, you still have your action, what? which could be attacks. Uh, can I throw my javelin of lightning? Uh, sure. Great. Do you have a bow, just out of curiosity? No. Okay, just wanted to check. Because I'm a great weapons man. It didn't make a whole lot of sense when I was building her. Okay. Then we might be going late tonight. Looks like it's already midnight. So uh, D20. I need to close this so I can actually see what I'm doing. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Do I just click it? Oh, wait. It's under action. Ha, I don't think it's gonna hit. That's an eleven. Nope. No, an eleven will not hit. I make it look good though, I hope. <laughs> well, the javelin of lightning, I believe it just has to make it has to make a saving throw, doesn't it? It turns it into a lightning bolt. I don't think you need to hit. Uh uh, when you hurl it and it. speak its command word, it transforms into a bolt of lightning, forming a line five feet wide that extends out from you to a target within 120 feet. Yeah. It has to make a DC 13 deck save yeah. or take the damage. So yeah, you don't have to worry about actually hitting it to do the lightning damage. Huzzah. Um, it rolled a nat 20 on its save. No. So give roll 46. I mean, it still takes half damage. Okay. Uh, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven damage? Yeah. All right, so half will be six. All right. All right. Aiden. Oh, man. So much going on right now. Uh, I don't suppose that I could just yell Jorz of Frul and he just falls. I don't think so now. Darn. I am not the Dragonborn. Uh, in that case, uh, since I don't like dragons, and this is indeed a dragon, I will indeed place my, uh, <clears throat> I forgot what it is. 
my slayer's prey upon it. All right. And I am no longer invisible. That only lasted until the beginning of my turn. However, uh, even with my bow, it's still... Actually, I technically should still be able to hit it, but nevertheless, I'm going to move up to this here probable flammable plant. And with all haste, I will launch a series of bow attacks. All right. Give me some my attack dragon rolls. wing longbow. Uh, 17 probably does not hit. It does not. Second one is it's 19. <laughs> that will also miss. Yeah, you fire them off and they just kind of bounce off the scales of this thing, doing no damage. We are in trouble. Uh, do I have any other bullshit? No. That was all of my stuff. That was my move, my bonus, and my action. All right. And with that, you see Pyre Scythe will circle higher for a bit. Um, Atrabash, if you want to make an attack for opportunity, you can. I do. As it flies away with you with Widgerald. And uh, let me make sure I can do this because I think I can actually cast a spell to do this. If you have Warcaster, I believe you can. Yes, I can. It is a spell with a casting time of one action or less. Yes. And does a 23 hit. Yes. Okay. Uh, that was going to be a fourth level inflict wounds, which is six die ten. All right. And uh, twenty six points of All damage. Right. Uh, 265 26 alright you hit it and you can see the blackness gather on some of its scales and you drain some of its life force away as it flies up higher another 30 feet high and then it just drops Widriel from its claws into that lava below and then it circles back down using the remaining or using most of its flying speed uh, and then it will breathe on those poor bar berserkers using its breath weapon. A uh, Widriel falls from 90, 90 feet. feet. Except they landed in liquid, so they, they landed, don't take well, the bludgeoning damage. He actually lands on a rock, <laughs> if oh. you look. I didn't know it was there, but he landed right on that rock. I know we have another D6 here somewhere. There we go. Let's see how vicious the odd duck dice are. The poor Widgeril. So far, it's not too bad. Oh, and then double sixes. 37 points of damage from the fall. There you go, GM. Slaughter your players with odd duck dice. That's right. Uh, he will use his uncanny dodge to take half of that. He lands somewhat softly. And then we'll make an athletics check to see if he can hold on to that rock. Yes, he does. He manages to hold on to the rock and not fall into the lava. And then that dragon breeze on those poor berserkers. Uh, they need to make deck saves. They get a plus one. Okay. So I'm going to roll those 11 d20s again. Mm -hmm. And Dave, I forgot. Give him 12 extra damage. 
because okay. uh, my Radiant Soul lets me add to any one attack a turn. Nice. Okay, so... Does it have to be an attack roll? Attack or spell. Nice. Uh, what do they need to get to dodge? Uh, just tell me what they roll on their deck saves. Uh, well, two of them rolled a total of two, one rolled a total of three, uh, one rolled a dirty 20, uh, a 10, 16, 18, 12, 13, 13, 17. Okay, so they all failed. And you just see the dragon, like, it's still in the air. It swoops down and breathes fire all over these guys. And it's kind of like the scene from Game of Thrones where they just start turning to ash and the flesh melts off them. And all you're left with is blackened weapons and skeletons as they just all took 70 points of fire damage. I mean, you know, that's... Yay. It's 70 points we didn't take. Yeah, Berserker Barbecue, I think that's uh... a... Berserker Q. All right. And that is its turn. All right. Dwayne, did you see the chat? In Zoom? in zoom and i believe that takes us to artabash yes artabash you are last okay uh i can definitely get to him uh how far down did he go he's about 10 feet he's 10 feet off the ground right now okay so that was only one action to get to him. Yeah. And, uh... I will... Where is... Oh, yeah, that's right. It's there. Sorry, I was trying to find my sheet to see which... How many level three spells I had left. Okay. Do we, does that work for you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So I am going to attack him once with a mace and it does a 17 plus it's a 20 something 20 24 that will hit. Okay. So it'll be five plus three plus a die eight for my other. So that's uh, 14 damage. Okay. Uh, and then I am going to once again inflict wounds with my other attack and a 20. Uh, 20 will miss. Oh, okay. That burns a... Okay. All right. And that will take us to the top of the round, but we are going to pause this fight here until next time, folks, as it is getting late and we are going to retire for the evening as the players find themselves entangled in a fight with a very very angry dragon. What really happened to the 11 Berserkers? Yes. Will Woodbriel fall in the lava? Tune in next week. Keep going. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone so much for watching tonight. I appreciate it. Um, again, I have been Dave, a.k.a. Twin Dead Tweets on the Bird app. Uh, you could normally catch me tomorrow night. Um, however, there is nothing on the agenda for tomorrow night. It's a night off for everybody here at Vorpal Tales. And then we will be back on Saturday with 
Ballad of the Blue Moon, run by our fantastic Birdie. It's a Pathfinder 2nd Edition game. And then after that, is there a game after Pathfinder 2E? There's Cult? Uh, or is it Camp Murder Lake? Or is that not happening this week? Uh, it's not happening this week. Okay, so there will be no Murder Camp Murder Lake yeah. this week um, as people are taking time off. Uh, players, please go around in the normal order and tell everybody, remind everybody who you were and where they can find you next. Oh, I'm first this time. Uh, I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and tonight I have been Artabash, the Life Cleric. Next time you'll be able to see me, it'll be Monday if my computer runs. And I am Dwayne. You guys can find me all over the internet at Made of Kimchi, and I was playing Aiden Birch Blossom, who may actually not like fighting dragons. Uh, <laughs> The next time that you guys can see me will be next Tuesday for the continuation of Dark Sun. Hello, I am Rosie, regular size mom. You can find me on Twitter at mom underscore sized or on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And in the next month or so over on Etsy as Odd Duck Dice, because dice are fun. They're pretty. If you're watching this, you probably like dice, so check it out. Um, and you can find me over on Big Dad Industries, uh, playing a game run by Ben Big Dad, the chief yeoman of Big Dad Industries. He is running the second episode of a technocracy game. I'm playing a progenitor. We are looking for a uh, kidnapped child. Tune in, see how it goes, watch the first episode. And then you can find me again uh, here on Vorpal Tales on Saturday playing Battle of the Blue Moon as an AI. Two, two. Um, and then you can find me again on Sunday back here being a mage again. This is my life. It's pretty good. Um, good so, you life. know, watch Vorpal Tales, watch Big Dead Industries, watch Martlet Games, watch all of these awesome places. Uh, I hope you have a good night. And again, thank you everyone for watching. Just a reminder, all of tonight's hits, crits, and damage that I have dealt were brought to you by Odd Duck Dice. Check them out. And good night. <laughs>